Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you this lovely mountain scene done in a combination of charcoal and graphite. Let's have a look. The usual tools, charcoal, woodless charcoal pencils, vine charcoal, some brushes, some blending tools, and my 190 GSM drawing paper, about 9 times 12 inches in size. That's what I'm going to be working with. But here I'm also going to use some graphite. I'm going to use some leftover graphite powder I created by sharpening. And I'm going to mostly use that uh, for the background. I'm going to use some graphite pencils as well, a little bit. But it's mostly going to be charcoal. So let's try working with this graphite uh, a little bit. I'm going to use that graphite powder on the background. I'm just going to dab a little bit with a brush and I'm going to start spreading it either with a brush or a paper towel. We'll see what works better. But one of the advantages of graphite over charcoal, especially graphite powder, is because it's very easy to create these smooth uh, lighter backgrounds. This can be a little bit difficult with charcoal. Here I actually remembered that I need to work out the composition first, so I did a bit of sketching with a dirty tutillion to give myself an idea what the terrain will look like. After that I just sort of continued shading the background using that graphite powder. And eventually I realized that a paper towel or a small piece of paper towel actually is doing a a lot quicker and better job than a brush. So I proceeded with that and as you can see it's covering a large area very smoothly and very quickly and that's what I wanted. And I'm creating a sufficient amount of value to give me some sort of a base tone to work with because I'm going to be drawing some clouds and some mountains on top of that. So I'm going to be drawing some areas of lighter and darker value as well. So it's uh, it's dark enough to work with, I think. And the graphite powder was created by sharpening or sanding um, a 2A, 2B pencil, I think. One of the softer ones. It's either a 2B or a 3B, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm moving on. And now I'm working with a charcoal pencil. I'm going to be doing most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil. I normally use these worse and woodless charcoal pencils, a medium one and a soft one. And for the most part I'm going to be using these medium charcoal pencils. Now we're going to have some mountain terrain and I want to have uh, a hill or a, m a mountain overlooking the other mountain in the distance. And on this one we're going to have some rocks, grass, trees and a dirt path winding downwards. And another thing that this graphite will be useful uh, for is that I want to create some misty effects at the bottom of the mountain on the right, which I'm eventually going to draw. Now here I'm going to draw some trees and one of the things I like to do in landscapes is I like to stack my objects one in front of the other so that we can create a feeling of depth. Now these trees that I'm drawing right now they're not going to be in the foreground they're going to be slightly behind some other trees which I'm going to draw later and this is why I'm going to be using vine charcoal on them. I'm going to use vine charcoal because I want them to be of lighter value, I want them to have less texture, and I want them to be a little bit less defined. And that way, when I draw some objects of darker value and with uh, better defined edges when, with more texture in front of them, uh, these uh, objects in the foreground will really push them back and draw focus to them so that 
we can feel that these trees that I'm drawing right now are a little bit further behind behind the trees in the foreground, if that makes sense. And if that if it doesn't make sense right now, it'll make sense once I uh, actually start drawing some trees in front of these. So we can imagine that these are some treetops, canopies of trees in the distance, which are looming behind this hill. Um, maybe some bushes. Uh, it, it doesn't need to be anything defined. I can just uh, draw some of these shapes and outlines that kind of look like canopies of trees and it doesn't really matter what type of trees they are. Now I blend that a bit with my blending tools. Uh, I, I use a tutelian for the edges to define those uh, shapes of canopies and I use a brush to spread the charcoal and to cover everything more evenly. Now one of the things that I can do to create some variation in terms of value is instead of an eraser I can clean up my brush a little bit and I just dab. I just dab a little bit. You can see what I'm doing. I'm dabbing a little bit with a clean brush and it's actually taking away a bit of value. It's almost like using an eraser but it's a little bit softer than using an eraser. We're not creating quite as much contrast which is ultimately the effect that I want to achieve. I want to have less contrast here. So by dabbing with a brush, with a clean brush, I'm creating some areas of lighter value to create some more shapes and some more um, volume in those uh, canopies uh, which I'm drawing right now. I'm going to draw a little bit of darker value at the bottom of them because that's where there's going to be a bit more shadow and I also want to create some contrast between the bottom of those trees and the top of the hill in front of them. So these look pretty good now, I'm going to leave them for now, I don't want to make them any more detailed than that. And you can see how much darker they look than the background, but they're going to look a lot lighter once I put some even darker trees in front of them. And now I started using the vine charcoal to create some suggestions of areas of darker value where I will have some rocks and some other shadow areas. So basically I'm kind of blocking in some of the larger portions of my landscape in order to give myself an idea where the lighter areas and where the darker areas will be. Already you can see some suggestions of terrain once I start brush, uh, blending that with a brush, but it's nothing defined yet. I'm going to be working on that a bit more. <coughs> now, I'm going to start drawing some darker shapes here in the foreground and I need to try to define I need to try to draw a couple of trees here in the foreground I'm going to be drawing a pine tree a nice looking pine tree here and I want to make it a lot darker and a lot more detailed than the trees in the background so let's see how that will work. Now, just like with deciduous trees, with coniferous trees you also have clusters of needles. In the case of deciduous trees you have clusters of leaves. Here, these branches and needles, they also form clusters. And you can see how I'm trying to draw some of these larger shapes that the, the entire canopy consists of. So I'm not going to draw just one simple shape, I'm going to break it into several smaller shapes like, like these. And I'm also going to draw some suggestion of branches on the sides of the on the sides of the tree trunk in between those clusters of needles. Now some of these 
some of these uh, areas will be a little bit darker, some of them will be a little bit lighter. But that range of value is extremely important because it will help me create a more realistic looking tree that appears to have volume and depth. And now I'm going to start shading those uh, clusters but at the same time trying to produce some texture that kind of looks like a tree from a distance. I'm not doing anything special, I'm just dragging my pencil and allowing it to produce a bit of texture and then I go over the edges a little bit and I try to define the shape so that it looks more like the branches of a pine tree which are kind of curling upward um, and growing out to the sides and I think this looks uh, like a pretty realistic coniferous tree but uh, there's a little bit too much texture there I need to do a little bit of blending there are too many of these white spaces in between so I'm going to make that a little bit more even and spread the charcoal around with a totillion. I make these totillions myself I just roll them into a nice fine tip if you want to see how they are made you can check out my videos and you can see that as I'm blending, I'm using a combination of a circular and back and forth motion because I don't want to destroy all of the texture I created. I want to leave some of the texture, but at the same time, I want to make everything a bit darker. I want to soften those lines a little bit, and I want to modify the outline or the um, overall shape of the pine tree and its canopy. So you can see how I'm trying to create an illusion of clusters of needles and there's no way I can really explain what I'm doing right now you just have to if you want to draw it yourself you just have to try to imitate um, what I'm doing as best as you can but it takes a little bit of practice as does everything with drawing uh, but I do think that the pine tree is starting to look very realistic now as you can see there are some shadow areas on the tree trunk some parts of it are a little bit lighter and others are a little bit darker and I'm generally going to want to have the left side a little bit darker with a bit more value and of course all of the or all of the areas all of the parts of the tree trunk and the canopy uh, which are deeper inside in, inside the canopy and closer to the tree trunk are going to be a bit darker because of the shadow and all of them which are sticking outwards and facing towards the light source which is coming from above uh, those are going to be lighter but my light source like I said is going to be coming mostly from the right side rather than the left because the left side is going to be the shadow side and that's why the left side of my tree trunk is so much darker than the right side and the same is going to be the case with the canopy as you can see I'm making the left side a little bit darker and I'm actually using a pencil eraser to take away a little bit of the value from the right side so that I can make it a bit lighter So my uh, landscape is uh, coming along. I've already established some depth in it because we have the blurry background. Then I have some more trees in the background and then I have some nice looking detailed trees in front of those. And I'm going to draw one more tree here on the left. Uh, this one won't be entirely visible but just some suggestions of branches on the left. Now I can also draw some suggestions of bushes uh, down below or maybe some canopies of other trees which are further down uh, behind that hill. I can leave that to the viewer's imagination so it doesn't really matter what those are. And now I'm going to proceed with the shading of these rocks. 
and I'm going to try to stay consistent with my light source which is coming from the right side so I'm going to want to make the left side a bit darker but of course the shape of these uh, rocks varies quite a bit so some of the their surfaces may be facing towards the light source, others may be fa facing away from the light source. I don't really care too much about the details right now in this stage. I'm kind of scribbling about and simply laying down a little bit more charcoal in some areas which I expect to have a little bit more shadow. So I'm basically trying to define the lighter areas and the shadow areas on my rocks. I'm going to put some more rocks here in the corner, in the lower left corner. And I'm going to have a few more rocks on the other side as well. But in between we're, get, we're going to have a whole bunch of grass and, and a dirt path in the middle. Right now I'm blending with a brush. And it may seem like I'm ruining it because uh, some of the contrast is disappearing but I really need them to be of darker value and I mean all, all, all of the surface to be a, a little bit darker. So I made them darker. I still have some contrast between the lighter and darker areas but I can always enhance that contrast by taking away a bit of value with my erasers. And as for the erasers, I'm going to be using a usual combination of a Kohinoor eraser and a pencil and a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. Those are the two things that I normally like to use. Anyway, here, closer to the middle, I'm drawing a couple more trees. These are a little bit closer together. And I'm also drawing some suggestions of other trees and brushes and bushes behind them. Did I say brushes? Sorry about that. So bushes uh, behind these uh, trees. And uh, now I'm using a pencil eraser to define the top edge of these uh, rocks so that they stand out a bit more as separate objects where one object ends and the other one begins it's very important to have a clean edge so that the object in the foreground stands out against the background sometimes the background is lighter and sometimes it's darker sometimes it's a combination of both you just have to adapt There are a few, uh, a few more rocks here as well, closer to these trees. Um, they are going to be casting a, uh, a, a bit of shadow onto, the, onto this area to the left. I need to refine their canopies as well because uh, they look like a bit of a mess, so I need to do some more work with the tutelion to make them look a little bit better. Sometimes my camera is not super focused. I'm still hoping you can see uh, what I'm doing. And I'm trying to explain the drawing process as best as I can right now. I'm doing the same thing with the tutelion that I did on the first tree. So basically softening some of those vines, adding a little bit more value by spreading the charcoal around and at the same time uh, fine-tuning and refining the edges or the overall shape of those trees. I'm also using a charcoal pencil to add some uh, darker areas or shadow areas on the tree trunk which is deeper inside the canopy and is obviously a bit darker. But at the same time, I'm also using that uh, pencil eraser <clears throat> to create a little bit more shadow on the right, on the left side, sorry. And I'm using an eraser to take away a bit of the value on the right side, which is the light side, or a lighter side. 
in this case. Uh, I'm adding some more suggestions of trees in the background behind these. So uh, I want this to look like some sort of a small ridge, a rocky ridge uh, with a few trees on it and beyond that ridge there is a slope which is going downwards and there are some more trees and bushes beyond and then on the other side we're going to have some very large and tall mountains but before I move on to these mountains I really want to do a little bit more work on the foreground because the foreground is more on the left side and the mountains are going to be more on the right side and I generally work from left to right and from top to bottom whenever I'm uh, working uh, well on any piece but especially if I'm working with a messy medium such as charcoal so in order to prevent smudging or ruining the work that I've done so far I'm first going to have to do a little bit more work on the left and then I'm going to move on to those mountains in the background on the right I'm adding a bit more value overall to the foreground because all of that needs to be a bit darker one of the the main ideas behind this combination of graphite and charcoal was to create this strong contrast between the foreground and the background. I wanted the background to be kind of uh, misty and lighter in value. And I wanted the, uh, the, fore uh, the foreground to be a lot more defined. I add a bit more powder, but, but this is charcoal powder to make this area a bit darker because I'm trying to add more and more value and now I'm going to go into some details trying to define uh, some smaller details and textures there's going to be a few more rocks here at the bottom of that ridge where it joins the rest of the slope smaller rocks nevertheless I'm shading the sides and the bottom with a sufficient amount of value so that they would be a bit darker and so that they would stand out against the terrain and now I'm going to start drawing some grass now when drawing grass there are a couple of things to remember but first I decided to define the shape of this winding path and you can see how it's getting wider and wider the closer it is to us and as it moves closer away from us it's getting thinner and smaller and disappearing into the distance as for the grass the thing to remember is that because of the point of view the grass that is growing closer to us is going to appear larger and taller and the grass in the background is going to be a is going to be a lot smaller and barely defined in terms of shape so you can just use a scribbling motion with your pencil to create some rough texture and then refine it a little bit with the races so this looks like a bit of a mess right now but it's actually getting a bit darker which is what i wanted to achieve and I'm using a pencil eraser now to define some of the lighter areas of these rocks but also to define some of the lighter blades of grass and I'm doing my best to vary the direction of my stroke a little bit so that it doesn't look too uniform I want it to look a little more realistic and another thing to keep in mind is something that I've already mentioned and this also applies to a pencil eraser as well your strokes need to become larger and larger as you move closer to the foreground so these light, uh, lighter blades of grass also need to be a bit longer and larger uh, the closer you are to the viewer um, I'm going back in trying to add a little more shadow in some areas and now I'm drawing some more grass on the right side as well 
Uh, another good thing that you can do is you can go back and add some areas of darker value to define some of these larger clumps of grass because uh, you can't just uh, draw all of the texture of the grass evenly you kind of want to create some variation in the drain now here's something that sometimes happens and it's very annoying when it does I actually uh, thought that I was recording and I wasn't uh, the camera was off so I did a bit of work off camera unintentionally and I started working on this mountain so I'm just going to explain briefly uh, what happened here while the camera was off I started uh, drawing some shapes of the mountain here on the right and I used a lighter graphite pencil for that so I'm sorry I lost a part of that part uh, I, I lost a part of the footage but we're going to move on and I hope that you'll be able to understand the rest of the drawing process so first I drew some of the darker shape darker shapes using a graphite pencil and those are going to be my shadow sides now the shadow sides are on the left now I'm going to use a pencil eraser to draw these lighter sides which are mostly going to be on top and on the right because of the light source obviously so these are some distant snow-covered mountains and uh, the reason why I did them in graphite was so that I could create contrast with the foreground which is in charcoal and which is a lot darker so the very fact that I used a different medium is going to allow me to create more contrast because graphite is a lot lighter than charcoal so this dark uh, charcoal in the foreground which is uh, a lot uh, which provides a lot more contrast and also more texture immediately pushes those mountains back and creates that uh, illusion of distance this huge contrast is exactly what I wanted to achieve and I think it really adds a lot to the to the feeling of depth in my landscape but right now I'm just doing a little bit of refining uh, using a combination of a tutelian, a pencil and an eraser but I'm mostly working with tutelians because I can't really do too much with a pencil here because I uh, want to create some softer, less defined shapes where there is less texture and less contrast I need to have that area in the background with as little contrast in with as little texture as possible I'm also dabbing my kneaded eraser here at the bottom to create some suggestions of uh, fog and mist at the bottom of those mountains but I'm also using that to create some suggestions of clouds at the top so I'm mostly done with the mountains I'm going to be doing a little bit of refining here and there uh, but I hope that uh, I managed to explain the drawing process well enough so that you can understand what's, what happened even though I lost about five minutes of, of uh, footage or so so once again sorry about that but we're moving on uh, there's no use crying over spilt milk or lost footage it happens even to the best of youtubers sometimes they simply forget to turn the camera on and I'm here moving on with the clouds I like to do a I, I like to use a combination of a pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser first I create some lighter stronger whiter areas with pencil erasers and then I dab a little bit with a kneaded eraser to create some smoother transitions and then I can go back and maybe refine the edges by using a pencil eraser again to create some lighter values around the edges but one of the things that you can do with a kneaded eraser when you're drawing clouds is you can use a dabbing motion and I'm going to explain why this is beneficial uh, because when you're dabbing like this um, you're actually not creating very white or very light areas because the lead eraser is lifting up a little bit of charcoal or graphite whatever it is that you're working with 
and when you're putting it down it's putting that graphite back so it's uh, creating some smoother transitions and it's not lifting up all of the material and that way you can create some um, some slightly um, less white portions where you don't want quite as much contrast on, contrast on the top of those clouds which are facing towards the light source I want a little bit more contrast that's why normally I have those tops of the clouds a little bit more defined and here I added some more suggestions of mountain peaks in the distance and I'm now trying to do a little bit more work to define the stuff in the foreground. I'm going to be drawing some more grass here on the right side as well. I need to finish these rocks. Um, but I'm just going to be drawing a whole bunch of grass. And like I said, because the, the grass that is further away from us is smaller and shorter and less defined, I can't really use this longer tapered stroke that I normally use in the foreground. I just use a scribbling motion, but here you can see as I'm going from the foreground to the background my strokes are getting shorter and shorter and shorter until they turn into scribbling. And once I start blending that, most of these lines won't be visible, but the thing is that brushes don't remove the texture entirely, so they soften it a little bit. So some of the texture is still going to remain visible even after I've done blending it. And once you finish blending it, it becomes a lot darker, but you can always go back and add some even darker areas, like some shadow areas under some of the individual clumps of grass, and that way you create a more three-dimensional looking terrain. I mostly used a medium charcoal pencil for the for, for most of this drawing process, but I used a soft charcoal pencil for some of the darkest bits, mostly those areas in between the rocks and some shadow areas on the trees and some of this, but mostly a medium charcoal pencil, which I feel is dark enough uh, to, to cover most of this drawing process. Now I'm using a pencil eraser to draw some highlights on top of that grass, but I'm also adding maybe some uh, dot-like shapes to create some suggestions of flowers here in the foreground and I'm also defining the the edges of the between the grass and the and the dirt path. For the sake of balance I want to have some more detail here on the right side as well. I'm going to draw some more rocks here and I first draw the shadow side and blend that with a with a brush and then I uh, I go back with a, need, need, uh, with a pencil eraser and I define the light side by taking away a bit of value. So I finish the grass here on the right and I'm refining it with blending tools and making it a little bit darker. Also drawing some highlights on top of them to define both these rocks and some, uh, some of the lighter clumps of grass a bit more. I can also create some suggestions of maybe some other rocks or trees here in the distance on the right as well. I don't need to have anything too defined, they can just be some shapes in the mist. And some more flowers, some more of these dots to represent flowers on this grass. I felt like this area <clears throat> in the in the lower right corner ought to be a bit darker for the sake of balance because it, it's a lot darker on the left. So I made that quite a bit darker and I did a bit of blending both with my finger and uh, with some other blending tools. But the key was to make it darker to have a little bit more balance because uh, the foreground should be a bit darker. The drawing is done. I put down my signature in the lower right corner. It's already sprayed with a fixative. I normally use a Fokinor fixative spray. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out my other videos. 
And if you want to see longer videos, check out my Patreon as well. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye for now.